Good afternoon, evening, and everything in between. As you can tell, what we're going to be talking about today is Matplotlib. The entire idea is that we take all of the numbers and analysis and data that we are getting uh, when we're using Python or we're doing data analytics with comma separated values or we're creating formulas with NumPy's curve fitting models. The problem is with all of that, we get lost in something I like to call the sea of data. You know, all of these numbers are all over our screen. You know, if we're using some type of spreadsheet software like Excel or Google Sheets, it's just numbers. And we get something I consider uh, analysis paralysis. Like we just, there's so much going on, all of these different numbers. It's very difficult to see like when there's, you know, insights. We can't really make uh, any insights. Uh, it's almost as if we're looking uh, over a vast ocean. So that's where we want to bring in some idea of visualizations, charts. These are uh, aspects that take that data in and present it in a, a, a way that our human brains can operate. You know, you always hear the saying that humans are visual creatures, and it's true. If I can uh, take, for example, a pie chart, and if I have color, you know, I take the pie chart and I create sort of a little uh, slice, if you will, where uh, it's red in three quarters, I can understand it's in three quarters. There's 75% uh, of the data is represented here, and 25% is represented uh, he here. Think that, imagine that's a pizza slice. So how do I do that inside of Python? Well, the de facto option typically is through something known as matplotlib. Now, there are others out there like Seaborn, and uh, I think Plotly is another one. But matplotlib is uh, typically the, you know, just standard edition. This is the way uh, to plot uh, data using Python. So if we take a look at this, if we were to pull up our spider in this case, we're going to be operating very similarly to how we are working with NumPy. Uh, so I'll come in and I'll make myself an import statement, matplotlib. But I'm not just going to say matplotlib, and it's not I'm going to create the alias, I will in just a moment. But we're looking at a very specific part, you know, there's a lot uh, with the matplotlib library. And so what we're actually going to zero in on and focus on is something known as pyplot. As you can see, there's two separate uh, options here uh, that uh, Spider happens to be telling me. You know, I could also be using PyLab. For our sake, we're using pyplot. Now, that's a lot to be typing in, and you're not going to want to do that as you're doing visualizations. So one of the things you'll most commonly see out there in the world is uh, it gets shortened out to PLT. Now, with that in mind, I've already sort of created the uh, data for what would be represented on my x-axis and also on my y-axis. So how do I go about creating my visualization? Well, it's actually super simple. You start with your PLT, just like with NumPy, if I want to use NumPy's functions and uh, formulas, I'd have to call it. But specifically, you can see it's already starting to present me with a number of them. The most simplistic one, plot. Plot basically is going to create a line chart based on some uh, x-axis and some y-axis. So if I come in here with x comma y and save, we hit play. What do you happen to know? It shows up. Now, depending on what uh, software you're using, you may not be using Spider. And if you were to run just this example right now, it would not show anything. And the reason why is, again, Spider's being generous to us. Uh, but you may happen to need to do plt.show. Typically, I like to add plt.show because um, I don't always use Spider. I use other pro uh, programs as well. And so it's not going to break your, your program to add it in. As you can see, if I added it, it ran the exact same way. Now with this, one of the things that you'll, you'll have to explore and learn about is what uh, matplotlib can offer. Now, if I wanted to just take this as is, that's fine. That's one way to do things. But maybe I want to create some, uh, I want to customize my visualization. Well, that's where we can start adding in more uh, parameters. And we 
these are keyword parameters. So say for example, I came in and used the keyword parameter color. Right now my color is uh, blue, but if I came in and said color equal red, what do you happen to know? Now my line happens to be red. Awesome, fantastic. And we can continue with this. There's obviously more of these options. I believe it's line width. That's one of the things you have to think about. Uh, is it line width? It happens to be line width. Congratulations, look at my line now. It actually is ginormous. It literally just looks like two lines kind of going together. Now here is another option. So if, say for example, I'm gonna just uh, comment this out for a second. I could also do what is known as a scatter plot diagram. PLT dot scatter. The same thing. And I, yes, you might happen to be noticing that there's a lot of information going on here as well. One of the things that you have to kind of take note of, and this is where, like I was saying, you'll 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 definitely have to hop on the matplotlib uh, documentation website uh, because just tons of different little subtle nuances that even I forget sometimes. Uh, but if I want to make that same XY uh, graph, and I'll just stop right there, uh, if we look at that and we hit run, we see same kind of model, but instead of those uh, data points being connected in a line, they are now in a scatter plot. But I kept on talking about those parameters and, you know, oh, well, I can do those same ones, right? Oh, well, that is kind of the same, but a little different. And the way I want you to think about this is if I came back, let me remove that. If you take a look at all of those different options that you're seeing with scatter, you know, S, for example, what does S mean? Well, you have to look up some of these because uh, depending on what visual you're going with, you may have to change things. In our case, I'm still gonna use the X and Y data uh, points that we've been talking about, but let's just see what size, uh, well, I just gave it away, didn't I? S means size. So if I came in and just said 50, well, let me increase that to say, hmm? let me just say 500. If I increase S to uh, 500, in my case on Spider, you can see that it's increasing the actual, what they would call marker size. But there's tons of others. Again, the same thing, just uh, I could also use the C parameter. Uh, the C parameter happens to be uh, very similar to color. It lets me change it to red. And I can also use something called, uh, I believe it's MS. So MS equals 5,000. Let's see what happens. No, it's actually going to error, and that's perfectly fine. So the reason why I, I did that, I, I presented that up, is like I said, you're gonna want to use, and just let me pull it up for you. You're gonna want to become very familiar with the matplotlib documentation. The entire idea is there's a lot of uh, little subtle tweaks and nuances that you're going to need to learn. and. I'm not going to spend videos talking about, oh, this is how you increase the, the line, make a line around your markers. Uh, there are tons of those available. And best example would be under their uh, tutorials, under PyPlot tutorial. It goes through the exact same thing. You can see it will expand out all of your information. It's going to show you all the different subtle nuances of how to create green triangles and blue squares or red lines and you can expand on this as is.